Patrick and Dr. Crystal Hammond and just welcome to all of you who are here with us, all who are on Zoom, all who yes. are on Facebook and, and YouTube and, and I'm going to say a shout out to all those who I know are even yet, yet coming and are on their way. Amen. Praise the name of the Amen. Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is truly a, a privilege and an honor as always to, to, to be in the house of the Lord. We all have something to worship and praise our God about. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The word of the Lord says, make a joyful shout to God. All the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Woo! Make a shout. Friends, they stand up. 
Heavenly Father. Father God, we just want to thank you this morning for, yes, God. for waking us to see this brand new day that you made. Thank you, Lord. Father God, it's a brand new day, a day that's never been made before. Yes, yes, yes. Father God, we thank you for everything Father, you're doing in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we, we thank you for, for providing for us. Yes, God. Yes, God. Father God, you provide everything that we need. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father God, we thank you for the love that you give us. Yes. We love you with all our hearts. Yes, Lord. With all our minds and all our souls. Yes, God. Father God, without you, we're nothing. Yes, Lord. Father, yes, we just want to thank you this morning. Yes, Jesus. And give you honor, honor, glory, and the praise. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And we'll give our love to you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Good morning, Faith. Good to see y'all. So happy to be here. I love this worship song. All right. More than anything. More than anything. More than anything.
I lift my hands. Yes, Jesus. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign upon the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my glory is gone. I can sing. I can sing to you this song. Love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything.
is so worthy. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. on Calvary's cross. Oh, yes. And yes. we're grateful, Father. We thank you, Father. Yes, Father. Father. And now, Father, we just ask this morning that you would just minister to us today, Father. Speak to us, O oh God. Use me, God, this morning as a conduit, Father, to deliver your message, O oh God, to your people today, Father God. And God will be all the better for it, Father. For your word declares that man shall not live off bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So, Father, we want to hear from you today. Our ears are open and our hearts are ready to receive, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and just bless God one more time this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Again, welcome to all of those who are watching us via live stream here at New Destiny Christian Center. Amen. We are honored and privileged and glad that you stopped by to just share this Sunday morning uh, with us. Amen. And we pray that you are blessed by uh, what you hear and see here uh, today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just before we get started in the message this morning, I just want to just... Uh, want us all to just be mindful, amen, uh, uh, here in this ministry, amen, we have a a, a, a member who has uh, lost a father, amen, a couple days ago, and we want to uh, definitely uh, uh, keep them in prayer, amen, we thank God because we know that God is able to heal uh, any broken heart, he's able to, to touch the deepest parts of our soul, Amen. And in a time like this, amen, uh, uh, hearts are heavy and, and souls are weak. Amen. So we pray, amen, hallelujah, amen. Those of you who, uh, 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 that may not know it, but uh, uh, the Smarts lost her, uh, Sister Smart lost her father on Friday. So we pray God strengthen her life and, and in the family, amen. We pray that God would give the whole family courage and, and, and peace and understanding in this difficult time. Amen. 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 So I'm, I'm, I'm asking Amen. the church here, New yes. Destiny Christian Center, I'm asking all of you to uh, be in prayer for the smart family. Amen. Those who are part of this ministry as well as uh, those who are uh, 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 in, in, in another state to just keep them up in prayer. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. I want you to open your Bible yes. with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 3. And I'm going to share with you this morning a couple of scriptures. And then I want to just uh, real briefly, I want to talk to you about something that God placed upon my heart uh, uh, just a few days ago. Um, Ephesians chapter 3. And then a very familiar passage of scripture that we are all familiar with because it is the foundational text upon which 
this ministry was founded, and that is Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. Yes, Lord. So when you get those two scriptures, say, I got them. Just a few moments, we'll wait for you. Oh, yes. 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 Hallelujah. That's Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians yes. chapter 3. And then we're also going to look at Jeremiah 29. Right here, looking outside the window, it looked like it's about eight. <laughs> Seventy-five and Amen. But we know better. Yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. We, yes. we, we know better. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look like you from right here, you can put some shorts on, a little tank top. Amen. <laughs> and enjoy the day. Amen. But I don't know about you, I'll take this. And the cold out and the sun out like this, I will take this. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. And again, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Amen. And if you can, I'm going to ask that you stand to the, your feet for the reading of God's word this morning. Yes. yes. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. And I'm reading Ephesians chapter 3 uh, from the Amplified uh, Bible version so maybe read it just a little bit different i know we used the new king james version here but i want to i want to read this out of the amplified this morning ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 and the bible says now to him who is able to carry out his purpose somebody say his purpose his purpose say it one more time his purpose his purpose okay i'm gonna read that again now to him who is able to carry out his purpose. Somebody say that. His purpose. His purpose. One more time. His purpose. His purpose. Now to him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than all that we can dare ask or think indefinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams Amen. according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory Amen. in the church, yes. in Christ Jesus, throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11, the Bible says... For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. I'm going to read that one more time. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Those are just two scriptures that I wanted to just kind of lay out as I share with you my thought for this morning. I want to talk to you this morning just uh, uh, for a moment here using the title, okay. Fulfill Purpose. Amen. Fulfill okay. Purpose. Somebody say, Fulfill, 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 fulfill purpose. purpose. Now, Jeremiah 29 and 11 uh, is the foundational scripture that this church is built upon. Uh, you heard us many times in our bulletins and in our brochures. We have that scripture there, Jeremiah 29 and 11, because we truly believe that, that God has a, a, a specific plan, not just for us as a corporate body of believers, but also for each one of us individually. How many believe that? Amen. That God has a purpose and, and an individual plan specifically designed for your life. Now, when Jeremiah uh, 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 shared this, this scripture here, when Jeremiah 29, when verse 11 is dealing with, is dealing with Jeremiah the prophet speaking to the children of Israel and encouraging them to hold on to God's unchanging hands. 
when you look back at Jeremiah 29, you will see that the Jews have been uh, 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 brought into captivity in Babylon because of disobedience of Judah. I'm just trying to share just a little bit with you here. They, they, they were brought into the captivity of the Babylonians because of the disobedience of Judah. But God told them that they would only be in captivity for 70 years. They would only be in captivity for 70 years. And as a matter of fact, under the uh, 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 the king Nebuchadnezzar, he had already grabbed some of them. And they had already been in captivity. But there were some that, ha that had not yet been uh, uh, brought into Babylon. But Jer Jeremiah was sharing with some of them that we are getting ready to go into captivity. But I want to encourage you to remember that God has has you on his mind is what he's trying to share with them. How many know that just because you find yourself in trials and tribulations, best, just because you find yourself in diverse places, just because you find yourself going through difficult times, that does not negate the fact that God still has a purpose for your life. That's what Jeremiah was sharing with the Jews. He was saying, we're getting ready to be, uh, to be held captive, but God has not forgotten about us, for he knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you. Now, this is a very powerful statement and a very powerful scripture, because that's like, that's like, that's like, that's like me saying to somebody, hey, look, man, I know you just lost your job. I, I know, I know the car just broke down. I, I know, I know somebody just, just, just just wiped out your entire bank account. But listen, God has a plan for your life. Man. Some of y'all would look at me crazy if I were to say that. But Jeremiah was doing that exact same thing. The same thing that I'm doing right now today with somebody that is going through a challenging time or somebody that is looking as if God has forgotten about them. God has not forgotten about you. As a matter of fact, turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, God has not forgotten about you. God has not forgotten about you. Amen. As a matter of fact, when I look at this scripture of Jeremiah 29 11, it says, for I know the thoughts. Somebody say thoughts. Now I thought about that. He says, he says, for I know the thoughts. God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Now, God is not saying I, 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 have, I, I'm thinking I got thoughts in my mind about you. No, God is, but if, if God could, and I just thought about this just last night. God is not, it's not just a thought. Because God is so powerful and so great and so awesome that if, if God just thought a thought, every other thought is now uh, uh, condensed in that one thought. Right, because now. God cannot just think a specific thought. He's too big. So when he thinks a thought, everything else is now contained in that one thought. And, and what I want to encourage you this morning is to remind you that God has purpose. Oh, he yeah. told Jeremiah, oh, before yeah. you were formed in your mama's womb, I knew you. Yeah. Matter of fact, again, I want to sink this in to you. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you have a purpose. You have a purpose. As a matter of fact, tell them you're not, you're, you're not an accident. You're not an accident. You have purpose. You That's have all I want to purpose. talk to you this morning about is, is just reminding you that, that God has not forgotten about us. He has not forgotten about us. He has not forgotten about you. He has not given up on you. God still, somebody watching me right now, the alive thing. God has not forgotten about you. He has not given up on you. He still has great things in store for you. He still has great purpose in store for you. As a matter of fact, I want you to return, turn to your neighbor and just remind your neighbor, just tell your neighbor, God has not forgotten about you. God has not forgotten about you. Amen. Now, I've told you this before. Listen to this, and I'm going to tell you again because I believe it's true. The two most important days of your life, the two most important days of your life are the day that you were born and the day you find out why. All right. <laughs> Those are the two most important days of your life. It's the day that you were born and the day you find out why. How many believe that? that I, I just believe that. Because as soon as you find out why you're here, you know what that means? That means that now you're able to freely walk in your purpose. 
the moment you come face to face as to why God put breath in your body, you are now free to walk right. fully in the purpose Woo! in which God has created you. That's why I shared with you before, Jeremiah 5, 1 and 5, where God said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. He told Jeremiah, before, before there was even a gleam in your mama and your daddy's eye, I have already planned your existence. Amen. Now that is a blessing because that tells us that before we stepped on this earth, yeah. God had already, hear All this, right. he had already put purpose inside of us. Yeah. He had already destined us for greatness. He had already set us as the head and not the tail. He had already commanded us and called us to be above and not beneath. That's for somebody this morning. I don't care what you're going through, how you feel, what it looks like. Before you step foot on this earth, before you took your first breath, God had already purpose in your life. He had already given you something to run with. Before you was born. God had already did that. Amen. Amen. Je Jeremiah came in the came into the world running. All right. He came in with a head start. <laughs> I know I was talking to a, a really good friend of mine, and and we were talking in, uh, a while ago, and we were talking about you know, <laughs> just about you know why it took us so long to get get into the church and uh, come to the Lord, and you know about how we were running and doing this and doing that, and and just saying, man, how come? How come God didn't just, just save us, you know, early on? You know, get straighten our life out early on. You know, have you ever just asked that? Because y'all ain't never asked. Yeah. <laughs> Some of y'all will say, no, Pastor, I was happy what I was doing. <laughs> Some of, I was happy what I was doing. I, I'm, I'm God, glad God gave me some grace and get some of that stuff out of me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> amen, amen. But we were just talking, you know, God, God, I wish God would have saved me a long time ago. He took, but then we came to the conclusion God knew what he was doing all along. All right. He knew what he was doing all along. We had to go through some of those things to get to where we are today. Yes. It was a part of his plan and his purpose for our lives. We may not understand that. We may not totally agree with how everything worked out and some of the stuff we had to go through. But if God be God, then if everything that God does it's done on purpose. All right. Somebody say he does it on purpose. He does it on purpose. Amen. So I just want to just talk to you about how everything that God does, God does on purpose. Say it again, on purpose. On purpose. Okay, now here it is, here it is. One of the greatest challenges of Christianity, my throat's a little dry. One of the greatest challenges of Christianity is not so much uh, 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 dealing with the, the, the doctrine of theology. Uh, I, I got you, sister. I got my water. I got my water. Yes, the usher said, you yes, got your water. Yes. That's video. It's not so yes. much one of the greatest challenges of Christianity. And even, it's, it's been not just now, but even 20, 30, 40, 50, since the foundation of the church, one of the greatest challenges of Christianity has not been the doctrine of theology, which is the study of God. It's not been the doctrine of uh, Christology, which is the study of Christ. It's not been the doctrine of, of soteriology, which is the study of salvation. It's not been the doctrine of pneumatology, which is the study of the Holy Spirit. But it has been and always been the doctrine of predestination. All right. The doctrine of predestination. Theologians are still arguing today the doctrine of predestination because predestination suggests to us that God has predestined some to be saved and brought into the kingdom of his loving Savior, of our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. So predestination has to do with God predestining some to receive the free gift of salvation. But predestination is just not about salvation. All right. Predestination is also about the sovereign will of God in our everyday lives. It's also about God impacting our lives in such a way every day to produce 
his purpose and his will here on the earth. That's what predestination is. Yes, it's about salvation, but it's also about God because God is sovereign, right? Yes, it is. So then if God is sovereign, then that means that he has full control over everything. So everything that we do, everywhere that we go, everything that, that God brings us, every place that God brings us into, there's a purpose. All right. As a matter of fact, just look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you're not here today by accident. You're not here today by accident. Amen. How many, how many know that God purposed for you to be here All today? Right. Yes, sir. You are not here. Yes, I, listen, I'm not talking about here breathing. I'm talking about sitting right here in All right. this church at New Destiny. You are here today because God, before the very foundations of the world, saw fit that you would be where you are today. All right. Oh, he is in control. He's the one that's orchestrating our lives. He's the one that's moving and, and, and activating things in our lives. He's the, he's the architect. Amen. He's the one that's painting the picture. Now, real quick here, I was uh I was uh I was at uh, my grandbaby's I was at my grandbaby's basketball game this past Thursday. Middle school. So you know how that is, you know. Score be like seven to two. <laughs> At the end of the game, it'd be like seven to two. You know? So you know how that is, right? So, and I'm just sharing with you how God deals with me. So I'm sitting here and I'm watching the game, and 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 as I'm sitting there, I a thought pops into my head. And I think I say, Well, God, what am I doing here? Is there, is there something that that you that you want to show me? Is there something that you want to show? That's how I, that's how God works with me. I could no matter where God, God could show me something. I could be driving down the street and I can see something, and then something will pop in my mind, and 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 I'm automatically uh, uh, turned to seeing what it is or trying to hear what it is that God might be saying to me. So I'm sitting at the basketball game and 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 I'm looking at these. You know, these young girls go run up and down the, the court, shooting baskets and missing everything. <laughs> you know, I mean, air ball, I ain't never seen so many air balls, man. <laughs> missing everything. And it was so funny because when some of them made it, it was like they would make it and they would go, so it surprised them. <laughs> but as I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm asking God, I'm asking God, what, what is it that you want me to see? There's something that you want me to see here. And when God, God showed me what he wanted me to see, oh, yes. but what he showed me was not as much as important as to what it is he said to me. What he said to me was that everywhere you go, I have a purpose for you. All right. Oh, and yes. it just blew my mind. He said, everywhere you go, I have a purpose for you. And, 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 and that, that just, just really struck me because I started thinking, I was like, okay, Lord, you, how many got up in, on Friday? If you, if you have garbage cans out, you got up on Friday, whatever day, got up, went out, the gar went to go pick the garbage can up, you know, went out and, and saw a neighbor and just started talking to the neighbor. Or how many was in the grocery store and all of a sudden somebody just started talking to you? God says that everywhere you go, I have a purpose for you. How many believe that? Amen. That no matter where you're at, no matter who you come into contact with, no matter what it is or where it is that God sends you, he always has something that he wants to fulfill in our lives at that moment and at that time. If you don't believe that, I don't know what else to tell you, but, but we have to believe. The Bible says that the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by God. So if you get up in the morning like I do, and you ask God, God order my footsteps, then somewhere along the way in that day, you are going to come into contact with the purpose for why God woke you up this morning. You are going to come into contact with the purpose for why God put breath in your body. Matter of fact, turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor that there is hope in God. There is hope in God. Tell them, to back, turn to him, tell him God has a master plan. And you're a part of it. God has a master plan and all of us are part of it. Can you just imagine just how fulfilled, hear this now, can you just imagine how fulfilled your life would be if you looked 
for every opportunity that God would put in front of you every day to fulfill your purpose for that All day. Right. Oh, yes. Just let that just sink in. Oh, every yes. day, yes, you're I looking for the opportunity for God to fulfill his purpose in your life in that day. Your life would be so, our lives would be so much more uh, uh, it, it not only intensified, but it would be so much more fulfilled. You know why? Be number one, the reason is, is because your mind will be stayed on Jesus. All right. Yes. <laughs> your mind, the Bible says, he who keeps his mind on Jesus will be in what? Perfect, Perfect peace. peace. Amen. So can you just imagine, I've said this before, every morning you get up, you ought to ask God, God, clothe me with the armor of God and use me to bring forth your glory. How many pray that kind of prayer in the morning? Amen. Some of y'all scared, I know, because you, you, you don't want God to bring you into something you ain't quite ready for. But I, I dare you, like we used to say on the street, I triple dog dare you, to get up in the morning and just pray, God, clothe me in your armor and then uh, show me or put me in a position to where I can display your purpose for my life or your glory for my life. And watch and see, won't God bring you to somebody? Watch and see, won't God bring something your way? Yes, yes. Everything that God does Amen. is done on purpose. Amen. If you did this this morning, that means right. that God has something that he needs for you to accomplish today. Now listen, we're not just all talking about great and astronomical things. It could be something very simple. Yeah. It could simply be just calling a friend and checking on them, right? right? It, it, it could be it could be it, it could be some, one of the uh, matter, as a matter of fact some of the smallest things are even more profound and impactful than some of the great things yes, it is. but every day God wants to perform and fulfill his purpose in yes, our life so here it is here's a question here's a question that I want to leave with you today how can we stay focused on what God is doing then in our lives to fulfill his purpose and not be distracted by the other stuff. All right, yeah. that's it. Yeah. And not be distracted by the other stuff. Let me come down here real close in this, in this so I can just see. Sometimes the distraction comes from people. All right. Yes, yes. yes. It's not always things and stuff. Sometimes it's people. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Some yes, of your family yes. are a distraction. Yes, right okay. Amen. Yes. Amen. Can I get a can I get a witness? Yes. How do we stay yes. focused on God's purpose yes. for our lives, his plan for our lives, and not be distracted okay. by the other stuff? Right. Well, I'm glad you asked me. I'm going to share just a couple with you, and then we're getting out of here. The first thing you have to do is never let the enemy make you feel like life has no purpose. All right. Never let the enemy make you feel like life has no purpose. How many of, let's be honest, how many have ever felt like, 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 like life has no meaning for them? Wow. Wow. If we're truthful with ourselves, and we may not be now when it, that we in the church, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, baptized in fire, but there have been once or twice I know in our lives when we felt like life has no meaning. I don't, it, maybe it was when you was young, maybe it was when you was a child, maybe it was when you was a teenager, but we have to remember if God has brought us into this world, and if our faith and our trust is in him, if we believe that God loves us unconditional, then we must believe that no matter where we're at, no matter what we go through, no matter how bad we feel, there is still purpose within us that God wants to fulfill. There is still, there is still, there are still things that God is trying to work out of us. And the enemy wants to make somebody feel like life has no meaning, like life has no purpose. Never let the enemy cause you to feel like you're just 
going through the motions. How many of you felt like that? Like you just going through the motions. I done been there. Never let the enemy make you feel. In other words, I, I, you, 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 in other words, I guess what I'm trying to say is we have to learn how to live life on purpose. Yes. You've got to learn how to live life on purpose. Doesn't mean that there are going to be some down days. Yes. But I once heard that my greater days yes. should outweigh my bad days. All right. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Amen. And listen, we can turn those bad days into better days if we do like the Bible says and look to the hills from whence cometh our help. Because our help truly comes from the Lord. Don't let the enemy make you feel like life has no purpose. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 tells us this. But you are a chosen generation. How many know you're chosen? Woo! Yeah. Amen. Listen to what he says. He says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Somebody say, I'm holy. Yeah, I'm holy. Say it again. I'm holy. I'm holy. Amen. We're not just talking about what's in your knees, young man. But we're talking about a lifestyle. He says you are a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So God says that we are we are not only just set apart, but God has already deemed us as holy, a, a royal priesthood. Yeah. You are you are royalty. Amen. You are royalty. You are a part of a royal nation. As a matter of fact, tell your neighbor, you were handpicked yes. for God's master plan. You were handpicked for God's master plan. So we can't afford to allow the, not the enemy or circumstances to make us feel like life has no purpose. Yes. Like, like life has, you may not have quite the direction that God wants you to go, but you got purpose. All right. You got purpose. You may not know what, what's going on in your life right now. You might be struggling with, with gravitating or grabbing the right direction and where God wants you to go, but you got purpose. Yeah. Who am I talking to this morning? I need somebody to know that you are filled with purpose. Yeah. And when you look at God and when you trust God and you believe God, when you trust him with all your heart and ask him, God, show me what my purpose is. Show me what it is that you want out of me. When you pray those kind of prayers, God will open up your heart, your mind, and your spirit and cause you to walk right in what it is that he created you for. But we've got to have a desire, a desire to please him. Somebody say, I want to please him. Amen. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, it says, and we know that all things work together for whose good? For his good. We know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. His purpose. Yes. His purpose. His purpose. His. It's God's will. Uh -huh. Everything it's, that we do is, is pointing us God. to God's purpose. Yes. My, my message simply this morning, saints, I'm going to give you the, just the, 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 the quick version of it. My message simply this morning is never feel like life is without, never feel like life is without purpose. All right. I don't care. I don't care what stage you are in. I don't care how 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 gracefully you are aging. Your life still has purpose. It still has meaning. Until you get up out of here, you're gonna continue to fulfill the purpose that God has put you on this earth. Because God's purpose is not complete until he's finished. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Amen. Until he's finished. He has the final say. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah. Philippians, I love this scripture. Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. Very familiar passage. None of these scriptures I'm reading, reading today are, are, are they're all familiar passages of scripture. These are just things that God has just dropped in my spirit. Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. Paul says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. 
I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Can you imagine if you've learned that? How many have learned the secret of being content? We, 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 we learn it, but sometimes we forget. Sometimes we forget and we get sidetracked and we get discombobulated and we get we get our minds get fragmented and and we get frustrated and then God's got to pull us back in. All right. And just tap us on the shoulder and say, hey bro, hey, hey, hey excuse me, but uh uh I'm in charge. I'm in charge. Okay. I mean, I've never been that God has to remind you who's in charge, right? Right. He, he, he's the one that's in control. And I got it. I got it. Amen. That's right. So Paul says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in one. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Why? Because I learned the secret of being content. I've learned the secret of being content. No matter what we go through, no matter what we deal with, the beautiful thing about it is no matter what we go through or what we deal with, God is already there. Oh, yes. The secret of being, Paul says, I've learned, he says that I've learned the secret of being content. Let me say that again. He said, I've learned the secret right. of being content. Not it was given to me. All right. He said, I yeah. learned. Yeah. Somebody yeah. say, I learned. Yeah. I learned the secret of being content. Right. So along the way of my walk with God, God began to teach me how to be content in him as he fulfills his purpose in my life. He's taught me that even when I'm in the valley, he's still there. He's taught me even when I'm broke, busted, and disgusted, he is still there. Even when people walk out on me, he is still there. Even when people say they ain't there with me no more, he is still there. Even when it feels like I'm about to lose my mind, God reminds me that he is still with me. How have I learned the secret of being content? By putting my trust in God. Learning the secret of being content is going through the process of learning something. Matter of fact, just nudge your neighbor and tell your neighbor everything you go through, you go through there is something to be learned. Learn. Amen. I learned something on Thursday watching them, them, them the young girls play basketball. That was a hard lesson, too. It's a hard lesson. Oh, yeah. Amen. Seven and two. That was actually the score. Eight, that was the score. Seven and two. Amen. Middle school. Amen. Hundred air balls. You know, double dribbles. Traveling. You know. Oh, Lord Jesus, let me get off. Amen. They have fun. So Paul says, I have learned the secret of being content. So never let the enemy make you feel like, I hope somebody's writing this down. Never let the enemy make you feel like life has no purpose. The second one real quick, and I got, I got like two or three minutes. The second one uh, here is start every day with the attitude that it will be better than yesterday. Yeah. Oh, yes. We're talking about fulfilling your purpose. You got to start every day with the attitude that it will be better than yesterday. Right? You, 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 we got to let go of what happened yesterday so that we can focus on what's happening today. We, we got to let go of the mistakes of yesterday so that we can grab a hold of the promises of today. We, we've got to start every day with the attitude that is going to be better oh, than yeah. yesterday. Yes. Hallelujah. How many of you have ever started started your day off on, on the wrong foot? All right. How many of you have ever Already. started today off running late? Put it like that. You, you, you wake up late and you running late, your whole day seems like it's jacked up. Right? The whole day seems like it's messed up. I go to work. When I go to work, I'm supposed to be there at 7 o'clock. Every day. I get there at 6 o'clock every day. Amen. I got to start early. Amen. 
I got I got to get there at least an hour early. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Amen. So I can be a, a, ahead of the curve. Amen. Because if I get there at 7, it feels like, like I'm in a rush now. It seems like I, I got to catch up. You know, Pastor Saul used to tell us all the time. He used to say to us, you know, if you're on time, you're late. <laughs> I tell them that right there now at the job. And when I'm dispatching, I tell them, look, we start at 7 o'clock. If you get here at 7 o'clock, you're late. All right. We've got to start every day off with the attitude that my today is going to be better than my yesterday. Psalms 118 and 24, the Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Now, I know I know. sometimes that we use this scripture on Sunday morning. You know, this is the day that the Lord has made, right? But that's not just a cliche. Amen. We're not just talking about Sunday. We're not just talking about today. We're, we're, we're talking about every day. If you don't believe me, look, look in Genesis. Uh-huh. He made every one of them. All right. So when he says, this is the day. Yeah. In the beginning, God created the day. Uh-huh. All seven of them. All seven. So all seven, we're supposed to rejoice yeah. and be glad. Not just on uh-huh. Sunday. So every day that we wake up, we ought to wake up with the attitude not, not, not with a frown on our face, but right. with a smile on our face, Woo! saying, this is the day that the Lord is made. I don't know what happened to me yesterday. I was jacked up. Yeah, I, I said a few words to that individual, and they were nice, but God forgive me. But today right. is going to be a good day. Woo! Today, I'm, going, I, I'm putting my, my yesterday oh, yes. behind me, yeah. and I'm trusting God that my today is going to be better than my yesterday. Do I got any folks in here that believe that if you wake up in the morning and you tell God, today, God, is going to be a good day. I praise you for what you are doing in my life today. I don't care what devil comes your way that day to distract you. You'll be able to move them to side. You'll be able to resist them. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 Verse 57, the Bible says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. How many know you already have the victory? You, you, already, you, you already, you are not a victim, but you are a victor. Oh, let me slay that one more time. You are a victor and not a victim. God has already given us the victory over every arrow that the enemy can throw our way. Nudge your neighbor one more time and tell your neighbor, walk in your purpose. purpose. Matter of fact, nudge him one more time and say, allow God to use you. Allow God to use you. Amen. Now, victory is not just a, it's not just a, 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 a position. It's not just a, a title, but victory is a state of mind. Yeah. Having victory is having the mind that God, if God be for me, who could be That's against right. me? That's what victory yes, says. Victory yes, is having the mind that God has he got my back. He, he said, he says, he said. He Amen, says. somebody. Here's a scripture I want to share with you real quick, and I'm just about done. Proverbs 27, verse 19. Listen to what it says. It says, as water reflects the face so one's life reflects the heart. As water reflects the face, so your life reflects your heart. So, so, so if, if you don't feel good about life, then that's a reflection of what's inside of your heart. And if you got a lot of junk inside of your heart, then obviously you're going to have a lot of junk in your life. So when you clean your heart up, and ask God to take control of my heart, God. Take that heart of stone out of me and give me a heart of flesh. Allow me and teach me to love you the way you love me. You will find that your life will be, will start getting in order. Hallelujah. What we see in the mirror is a reflection of what we see in our heart. Wake up every day. Start every day off with the attitude that will be better than yesterday. My last one, never neglect to thank God for what he has taken you through. All right. Never neglect to thank God for what he is taking you through. No matter what you're going through, he's taking you through it. 
No matter what we find ourselves in, He is it. taking us through. I got it. Our last scriptures, Hebrews chapter it. 11, verse 6. But without it. faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So we've got to trust got it. that God knows what's best for us. We've got to walk by faith and not by sight. That's right. We've got to learn to give thanks to God in every oh, situation and yeah, yeah. every circumstance we it, that we find ourselves Back in. Up. Never neglect we got it. to give thanks to God for what He has allowed us to go through, for what He yeah. is taking us through. Put God your hands said. together and give God, God a big said. round of applause. God Hallelujah, Jesus. Fulfill purpose. God wants us to fulfill our purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to ask everyone, just before we prepare to dismiss, we're going to take communion. Amen. I'm going to ask everyone to please stand. Hallelujah, Jesus. up to the Lord and repeat after me. Thanks be unto God, Thanks be unto God who always, who always causes, always us to triumph causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Let Amen. us drink it together. The juice that represents the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I know it was the blood
Before we close out in prayer, uh, there's a few ways you can give it to the ministry. Uh, you can text the word GIVE to 276-209-3733. Or you can go online at uh, www.newdestinychristiancenter.net. Or you can come in here and put it in the office. Amen. 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 <laughs> there you go. Oh, yes. What are you talking about? Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and this word which we receive. My God, yes, Lord. With open hearts and open ears. Yes, God. Let us continue to work in you and you work in us. Yes, Lord. Until we meet again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Glory, Jesus. And I believe it. That's it. That's it. That's it.